everyone, and welcome to this episode of The Patient Pulse. This month, we are pleased to welcome Dr. Benud Bigdeli to talk about a topic that has become increasingly important in the medical field. He will provide us with an update on where we are with COVID-19, what we know so far with the new Omicron variant and its relationship to blood clots, how new antiviral and anti-inflammatory medications may be helping patients suffer fewer blood clots, and why there are more questions now than ever before about COVID-19. Dr. Bigdelli joins us from Brigham and Women's Hospital, where he is a vascular medicine advanced fellow. He is a cardiologist and clinician investigator interested in thrombotic venous and arterial vascular diseases. He is a co-author for more than 120 published manuscripts, and his research focuses on outcomes research, epidemiology, and comparative effectiveness research related to thrombosis and antithrombotic therapy. Welcome, Dr. Bigdelli. We are so pleased to have you, and please take it away. Hi. This is Dr. Benut Bigdeli. I'm a cardiologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital, also Harvard Medical School in Boston. It's my pleasure to be here with you, signing off on behalf of NATF to discuss with you some potential updates about thrombosis in the context of the recent series of events, including more vaccination, the Omicron variant, new antiviral medications, anti-inflammatory therapies. So just trying to address some of them. I think to begin with, I need to share with you that we have so many interesting questions, but few answers at the moment. That being said, I can share a series of general insights. Early during the pandemic, we were all becoming very concerned about blood clots in patients with COVID-19. And it's in that context that a whole host of randomized trials were designed trying to figure out really what is the best way to prevent these blood clots in patients with COVID-19, be it in the outpatient setting, inpatient setting, patients who are so critically ill that go to the ICU, or even after the period of hospital discharge. And some of those studies have been successfully completed in forming the practice that we do. One question that we have is, to what extent are these preventative therapies impacting the incidence of blood clots in COVID-19, meaning in routine practice, are we still seeing as many of those events as we did see back in 2020 or not? And there are not really a lot of recent studies, but my personal anecdote, probably I would say the blood clotting events are a little down in part because of the preventative uh, therapies that we implement a little more so than before. Another interesting and important question that has come up is what is the effect of anti-inflammatory therapies? Again, early during the pandemic, we didn't really know what to do with these uh, serious presentations of COVID-19. Now we know that corticosteroids which are anti-inflammatory drugs, are a mainstay of treatment, and many patients receive ancillary treatment with additional anti-inflammatory medications. The question is, do these also have an effect on the rate of blood clots in the venous system or arterial system? We have more studies to come up about them soon. And perhaps a little more interesting and exciting is that now we have more antiviral options including most recently FDA giving the green lights for one of the very first oral antiviral agents against SARS-CoV-2. Is it possible that people who take this are less susceptible to serious adverse events, including blood clots, in addition to other adverse events? I think we need more information in the forthcoming months. Another one, we know that people who get vaccinated are at less risk for adverse events from COVID-19. They're at lower risk of getting hospitalized with COVID. If they get hospitalized, the risk of dying from COVID is less than people who haven't been vaccinated. What about their risk of getting a blood clot? I don't think we have a lot of information about it, but we do have some data sources through which we can do additional analyses. So I'm hopeful we get more information. So all of this being combined, I think we do need additional new series of analyses to understand how is the trends 
How is the incidence of blood clotting problems with COVID over time? Are we seeing still as many of them as before or it's less than before? And among people who develop blood clots with COVID-19, are they still having so many uh, adverse events? Is the mortality rate still so high or we are becoming more effective as a system to treat these uh, and to mitigate the adverse outcomes? And to end my thoughts, I wanted to share some information with patients who have had a history of blood clots and are thinking about their booster vaccine. I think we don't have too many pieces of data, but the logic and from what we know already, the minimal risk of uh, vaccination is far outweighed by the benefits that it confers with redux reduction of the risk of blood clots and other adverse events with COVID-19. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Bigdelli, for that wonderful update on where we are with COVID-19. I think we all learned a lot about COVID-19 and blood clots and the new medication that may help patients suffer from fewer blood clots. We really appreciate you joining us to deliver this great update, and we hope the rest of you will join us again for another episode of The Patient Pulse.